There's a reaction to blood on this screw that's securing the doorknob. The screw seems rather loose as well. Come to think of it, the door to this room was chained shut when the fire started. Could this be related to that in some way? There's a rope wrapped around the shaft of the ceiling fan. There's no mistake, those are blood stains. stains here too. If these are from the deceased, we may be able to use this with something else that we know. Calcium hydroxide? You mean slaked lime? Yes, small amounts of quicklime were also detected. Quicklime is a substance that releases a great deal of heat when it reacts with water. Oh, huh, I see. So this was... I agree, but isn't it odd? If the killer wanted to start a fire, there are far easier ways to go about it. Hmm, you're right. There must have been a reason for this. It's our job to investigate that, isn't it? Harder, little guy. How was the room when the firefighters arrived at the scene? The entrance was closed, but was it completely inaccessible? That's right. The chain on the door had been attached, but the door itself wasn't locked. Um, sorry, but the door only opens about 15 centimeters with the chain attached. I don't even think a small child could get through a space that small. <sighs> You're so unimaginative. Flex your mind and think about it. Listen to me. What I'm trying to tell you is... This loose screw tells us everything. With the screw removed, the entire plate on the door can be swiveled around by the doorknob. The plate itself is about 20 centimeters long, so the gap increases to almost 35 centimeters. How big does somebody have to be that he couldn't fit through a space that size? Oh, I see now. That's more than enough room to get past the door. So the killer just screwed the plate back on from the outside after he left the room then. I think that's the most likely explanation, but the killer was in plain sight once he was outside the door. He wanted to finish quickly. The killer couldn't completely tighten the screw and left the area as we found it. Well, 
That proves that this isn't quite the locked room mystery we thought it was. Huh. Still, this doesn't help us figure out who the killer is. I need to investigate the situation in more detail. Dr. Kimishima, we've identified the blood on the screw. It's a DNA match with the victim, Dennis Taylor. Why would his blood be there of all places? Hmm, it's simple. What happened was... That's right. It's probably because he touched the murder weapon. Wait, why would the killer touch that screw with the murder weapon? He would have to, if the weapon was... Yes, a screwdriver. It was likely used to both loosen and tighten that screw. I see. Then the screwdriver left the blood on the screw while he was covering his tracks. Yes, these pieces of information are hiding an important fact. I didn't notice because the bleeding had stopped completely, but this isn't a bruise. It's a stab wound. This strange pattern here is likely... Yes, that's right. It's indisputable evidence that the weapon was jammed in so deeply that the grip left a bruise. Hmm, that's right. There were two different blood stains left in the deceased's room. Now, which of these blood stains happened first? That's true. Unless the corpse got up and walked over by itself, it's most likely that the deceased died where the first blood stains were found and then was carried to the bed afterwards. That would explain why there was such a small amount of blood on the bed itself. Hmm, yes. These do lead the way to a definite truth. Looking at the location of the bruise, the tip of the screwdriver must have pierced Dennis's lung. His lung would then rupture, causing pulmonary emphysema, and he would have suffocated. This explains the spots of hemorrhaging in the corpse's eyes. What actually happened that day is slowly coming to light now. 